supporting pondering back with another video please come in thumbs up this video subscribe to the channel all of that yo i appreciate all y'all supporting my videos please make sure that you support the channel the cash app is in the description of the video so listen first thing first i want to talk about is tisa tells so you know tisa tells she's a channel that i respect you know i watch her videos um i like her content but you know she's been doing coverage on the whole diddy situation you know that there's been conversations that everybody's talking about jay-z jay-z's going down next well a lot of people have felt as though that foxy brown is going to be a person that's going to speak and be one of the people to take Jay-Z down and I want to tell you this and I don't want to like I want to just tell you this I'm pretty sure a lot of y'all know this but I've been a fan of female rap for a very long time and I'm one of Foxy's biggest fans right and what I will tell you is this and like what I will say is is that Foxy will never do that to Jay-Z now will I do I understand completely that she that he was eight years older than her when she was 16 you know 15 16 years old yes he was but the thing about it is she's never going to talk against him right I think what got a lot of people riled up is when she said, but you don't you don't pay attention to the key words that she said she, when she said that, you know, her story will shock you to the core. But I don't play victim at all. Right. Foxy, they even had old interviews of her when she was on there saying that when she was a teenager, she was dating men that was like way older. And I also want to say this, too. Right. Um, when I was younger, all of my friends, like in high school, spoke to guys who were older than them. Not saying that it was right, but back then, it's like they tried to normalize it. All of my friends that was 17, 18 in high school, my friend who was 17 was pregnant by a 30 year old man. It's crazy, right? So, anyway, so, you know, Tisa Tells, Tells has been doing coverage on Foxy Brown. Right. And, you know, the fans get to talking and everything. So to lead up to this, somebody had um, posted Jay-Z is about to be blown up soon. Once Foxy Brown NDA is over in 2025, baby, she's singing. I feel like Rock Nation is almost done. That's why Nikki is so comfortable talking like this. Right. I want to just say this, too. Right. I didn't like when Nikki had mentioned the Foxy and Aaliyah thing, because for one, Aaliyah's not here. And then Foxy, let her speak up. She's a grown woman. Let her come out. I know that they probably speak behind the scenes and all of that. But. I feel like a person's trauma is theirs. Let them come out and say it if that's what Foxy was going to do. But even then, I knew that she wasn't going to do that. Me personally, a lot of people is turning on Foxy Brown online now. And they feel like, you know, well, you know, they feel like she's an op. She's not an op. She's from a different time. Like, you know, you have to realize. I know that Foxy loves Nicki, but she knew Jay-Z before Nicki. Jay-Z kind of like, you know, they changed each other's life. So she's not going to go against that. Right. So anyway, um, Foxy responded and said, in icon business, miss me with the fake news. NDA ain't a motherfucker alive could, t could stop my story. NDA on my NDA on my shit gonna run me a hundred mil, right? And a lot of people was running with this because they don't truly know Foxy Brown. They just trying to piece the, the puzzle together because they like Nikki. I get it, right? So anyway, let's move on. Also, just to add before I get to the Tisa Tells, um, Foxy addressing Tisa Tells, um, Russell Simmons was also a big part of Foxy's career coming into the game she just wished him um a happy birthday on her in her stories now i'll say like you know i don't know how to feel about that but that's also a person who played a pivotal role into her career now i don't want to uh, what i'm trying to say is that what is the um the word you leave it in the comments it's some sort of um syndrome that they say a person has who's been through trauma and they just whatever it could be that i feel like the same thing that usher has been through right usher i'm pretty sure he's been through and seen different things with diddy and he probably weighs the pros and the cons like you know i have this lavish lifestyle i make money i do whatever and he probably feels like he would never come out and say nothing about diddy maybe when he's in his 80s 70s he might do it but i don't think that usher would do it in the now and we know that this we know that there's a story there right so anyway she she wished Russell Simmons a happy birthday to the Godfather right now she posted a picture of Tisa tells I'm gonna put it up here you know as well she posted a picture of Tisa tells um, where it says Foxy Brown breaks silence game over for Jay-Z and Diddy linked to Tupac case Foxy says stop playing with my name dying for a comment can't spin me with the sucker shit to take hove down better ask about the cloth I'm cut from I'm telling y'all Right. And I'm not saying it in a way to brag to say that an abuser or whatever is getting off. I'm just telling you that Foxy Brown is not going to do that to Jay-Z. She has way too much respect for him. She's not going to do that. You know, Um, and then they said, when Foxy, when you speak is over, stay protected. She said, y'all want me to be anti hove so bad. Right. And, you know, Tisa Tells has done consistent um coverage on, you know, the whole Jay-Z, Diddy and, you know, sh shit like that. I just say this like. Um, 
Foxy is never going to speak against Jay-Z. I just don't know which other way to put it for you. She's never going to do that at all. So listen, leave in the comments. Let me know how you feel about that, um, about the Tisa Tells and Foxy Brown. I felt like she tried to low-key, try to clock Tisa. You know what I'm saying? But I understand it's like if a person hasn't spoken out, if they haven't given you any type of ingredients to kind of like mix up, it's kind of hard. It's all speculation. I know even in commentary, I speculate, you know, and I respect Tisa Tells. Do your thing and whatever, you know? Anyway, let's move on. The next thing I want to talk about is Cardi B. So Cardi B, again, she's called out TMZ, caught her up in the club with off tiggity. Caught her up in the club with Offset. You know, she's partying and she's trying to find this new life because Star Brim is locked up. And I guess was that T Styles that was with her? So, you know, Offset was kind of like separated in the club from her. But you know that he was there as her chaperone. You know, she needs some sort of black connection. I'm still looking for the bad Dominican mommies that's going to be up in the club with her. Like, where are they at? Why the bad Dominican mommies ain't up in the club with Cardi? Because she clinches onto the black girls for aesthetic and I think it's pathetic. This is why you ain't got no credit. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I just feel like this is trash. It's like, you know, um, they tried to say like, you know, Cardi wasn't, you know, she wasn't, they didn't arrive together and all of this BS, but you know that they planned that. You don't think Cardi B knew? Come on, he was at, he was, he was literally at her child's birthday party. You know what I'm saying? And TMZ is the ones who reported it. They they, rep they reported the shit. So Cardi B and Offset party at NYC club amid bitter divorce battle. Cardi B and Offset both wanted a night out on the town and hit the street and hit a speed bump when they ended up at the same nightclub. Come on, as big as New York, New Jersey is, you think they ended up at the same place? TMZ obtained footage of Cardi B living her best life at the Dream Hospitality Group party in Stafford Room, New York City, early Sunday morning, where she was moving and grooving. Um, but eyewitnesses tell us that things took a turn when a DJ gave a shout out to Offset being in the house, which uh, apparently startled Cardi. It ain't startled her, she's acting. And it's bad that Cardi B lies so much, even if she was startled, I don't believe it. We're told that the execs didn't arrive or leave together, nor did they hang out during their time at the club. In fact, their overlap was short. The The couple avoided any drama and Cardi kept uh, twerking like her ex wasn't there. As for Offset, he later slipped out solo, leaving the mama of three kids <laughs> to keep the party going. So, all right, if there's one thing we know about Cardi and Offset is that they um, they don't pull punches with each other. Cardi went off on him on IG Live, and you know, they going on all that bullshit. Cardi is, listen, he's there chaperoning her. He's like, babe, you all right? You know, he got to make sure he got to check in on the money. He got to check in on the money because, you know, she's Jocelyn. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He got to check in on the money. He got to check in on the money. That's all that he was trying to make sure that she was okay. They act like they ain't talking to each other. Ra 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 ra. You know what I'm saying? I'm sick of these publicity stunts. And I'm, I'm, I'm sick of them. You know, get in the comments. Let me know what you think about Cardi B fronting and stunting and all that, right? Um, Another thing I wanted to talk about today. Do I want to get into that? Because I don't know if I'm going to really have time to fit that in my topics. But I do want to mention this, right? So Asian Doll and Tusi went off on each other online Tusi came out and he had this whole video and this is what this is what i'm personally going to say and i'm going to be be co completely transparent when i seen Tusi's video i did think that he was sassy just the way that he was kind of like neck popping i don't know if it was his voice or whatever but listen i want to say this i don't care if you're gay or not right i don't care you know people have said stuff to me like that like they question me or whatever right and the truth will stay with me i mean if i know you you'll know about me but it's just like I don't understand, like, um, I, I don't like when people do it to be malicious, and I felt like Asian Doll probably could have been being malicious, but I don't understand why Tusi cares about people being popular based off they man, so don't show your girlfriend off, don't make her popular, but then don't get up here after c complaining, talking about they on famous people for their birthdays and all of that, neck popping and rolling and voice sounding all crazy. The crazy thing about it is Tusi sounded more masculine when he was screaming on Asian Doll in the space than he did when he was actually recording the video. Um, funny looking motherfuckers always gonna act up i don't want to spend too much time on that let me know what you think about the whole ordeal with tusi asian doll he started posting pictures of her body and stuff like that what i didn't respect about tusi is that he said that he'll argue with a girl online but he won't argue with a guy because it leads to too much politics it leads to too much politics i don't respect it let's move on anyway Nicki minaj came out today right you know she's on her successful gag city tour why these other Zabor and all of that, right? So Nikki came and she had the clock T on the shade room, making the stallion ex friend Kelsey, right? Now I do want to say this, right? Kelsey did come out and say that, you know, she was not prompted by Nicki Minaj and her Lochi team or whatever to do the photos that she did. She did a photo shoot with Lochi with um the sneakers on. So Nikki came out. And she said, 
the fact that the shade room posted this is uh, posted this live five days ago and I'm just now finding out chow laughing out loud I love being booked and busy models for my collection she posted the photo and my sneakers me nor my company knew anything about this until she posted it so she did that um, she did what many people did when they received my sneakers they posted a photo in them Kelsey definitely went all the way out with this professional looking backdrop though but she is no way professionally connected to my sneaker brand no matter what no matter what y'all pay to the shade room to post please remember that I did a sold out record breaking tour and was um, asked to do a second leg too busy and too successful for the clownery these calculated plans stories and narratives every time y'all gotta promote is only gonna make me feel even more like I'm that bitch ooh Nikki talk that talk that I'm that bitch Nias talk that I'm that bitch Nias on that business so um, no confidence in your talents and abilities as labels to sell albums or anything so you waste money and energy on this gag city miami tonight by the way um did kelsey not tell them that she wasn't modeling for the for the line barbs did she let them think that i gotta get caught up y'all laughing out loud child woo wee boof on the boof on makeup um and she said that she was in the makeup chair right so that was crazy also what i want to ask is let me know what you think about kelsey did kelsey deb i feel like kelsey debunked it but still i do feel like it does look away you know but who cares who it looks away to to the megan and stallion fans like what are we really talking about here who cares who it looks if it looks away but i understand nikki you know making sure that she made a statement to let people know that this is not associated with her you know i understand that also nikki minaj is in gag city miami tonight performing sold out minaj sold out tour and guess who's in the building Safari, sorry, Safari stepped out to the st sorry, Safari stepped in the building with a jean vest on, and you know Erica Mena gonna go crazy. You know Erica Mena gonna go crazy. Cause they get all them lazy. <laughs> they get all them crazy. Remember she had that video and they said, Erica, you're a barb, you're a barb. That shit had me dying. She said, No, I'm not. No, I'm not. They said you're one of Nikki's barbs. No, I'm not. <laughs> that shit was so crazy Let me know what you think about Safari Of course Safari loves Nicki Minaj Of course Safari was around Nicki During the, um, her pivotal days Coming in through the, through the um, Coming into the industry Some of her most iconic times He was around So I'm pretty sure You know I understand that Safari probably still in love with Nicki, you know, um, yeah, he's in love with Nicki. Yeah, he wants to see the baddest bitch in rap do it and see that she was able to maintain this career that he tried to lie and say he ghost wrote for her, you know, after they broke up to try to hurt her and try to be mean to her, you know what I'm saying? So, of course, he want to see the baddest bitch in rap. Of course, he want to see that. You understand what I'm saying? It's not no, listen, it's, I'm not surprised at all. I think it's funny, but I'm not surprised at all at all you know what i'm saying what do you think about it do you think i think he has a right to be there if he wants to be there what do you think you know it's not about what i think what you think you know another thing that i want to address is diddy's mama now this is how i'm gonna wrap this video up diddy's mama janice combs came out and she made a statement for her son yes she did let me turn this up a little bit because I want to read this to y'all, right? So Janice Combs came out and she made a statement for her son and I am going to do the honors of reading it to you. All right. So Janice Combs, the mother of Sean Combs, through her um, undersigned counsel, her undersigned counsel on um, behalf of the Combs family releases the following statement. I come to you today as a mother that is devastated and profoundly saddened by the allegations made against my son, Sean Combs. It is heartbreaking to see my to see my son judge not for the truth, but for the narrative created out of lies. To bear witness to what seems to be a public lynching of my son before he has had the opportunity to prove innocence is a pain unbearable to put into words. Like every human being, my son deserves to have his day in court and to finally share his side and to prove his innocence. I am here to portray my son. I'm not here to portray my son as perfect because he is not. Oh, we know he not, baby. We know. We know. None of us is perfect, though. All right. He has made mistakes in the past and we all have. My son may not have been entirely truthful <laughs> about things such as denying that he ever got into a violent uh, uh, that he was ever violent with his ex-girlfriend Cassie when that hotel surveillance showed otherwise. Sometimes the truth and a lie become so closely intertwined. Shut up. 
She says, sometimes the truth and the lie become so closely intertwined, it becomes terrifying to admit one part of the story, especially um, to whom the truth, especially when that truth is outside of the norm or is complicated to be believed. This is why I believe my son's civil legal team opted in to settle with the ex-girlfriend's lawsuit instead of um, c contesting it until the end resulting in the ricochet effect that the federal government and the, the federal government used this decision against my son by interpreting it as an admission of guilt mm. go ahead mama combs it is important to recognize that that none of us regardless of our status uh, are immune to the fear of to the fear or mistakes not being entirely straightforward about the issue does not mean that my son is guilty of the uh, repulsive allegations um the repulsive repulsive allegations oh this card's ugh. all right so the repulsive allegations and the grave charges leveled against him Many individuals who were wrongfully convicted and later exonerated had their freedom taken from them because they were guilty of the crimes that they were that they were accused of. But because they didn't fit the image of what the society considers to be a good person, history has showed us that individuals can be wrongfully convicted to their past um actions or mistakes you just want to make sure the money is still rolling in mama combs just listen keep it keep it real keep it real keep it real all right so then mama combs said watching the world make oh shoot watching the world make jokes of my son's life crumbling before my eyes is something i can never forget <laughs> it is truly agonizing to watch the world turn against my son quickly and easily over lies and misconceptions without ever hearing his side or affording him the opportunity to present his side these lies thrown him these lies thrown at him motivated by the those seeking financial gain and not and not justice oh they want financial gain and justice mama combs what is going on mama combs what's going on baby all right so she said that they don't want financial gain they they want financial gain and not justice all right these individuals saw how quickly my son's um, civil legal team settled his ex-girlfriend's lawsuit so they believe that they can receive a quick payday by falsely accusing my son. False allegations of sexual assault thwart true victims of actual violence from getting the justice they deserve. To make matters worse, the federal government is now using these lies to prosecute my son. This injustice has been unbearable for our family. The worst part of the ordeal is watching my beloved son be stripped of his dignity. Not for what he did, but before people choose to believe about him. I ask his supporters, who? His fans, who? colleagues and friends in public to not judge before you have a chance to hear his side. I beg you to think about who have been wrongfully persecuted and to remember that not everyone who has made mistakes in, mistakes in life deserves their entire existence judged by a single action or a few mistakes. My son is not a monster that they've painted him to be and deserves a chance to tell his side. I can only pray that I am alive to see him speak his truth and be vindicated. Respectfully submitted on behalf of Janice Small Combs and the Combs family. Now, listen, I understand a black mama. Listen, let me tell you something, right? Ooh, do I want to take it there? Do I want to take it there? Black mamas will believe their son even if they're lying. I know it because I'm a black male and I have brothers and I've seen my brothers do certain things and my mother be like, not my son, right? And the whole time, that's even making them worse. Mama Combs, what you got to realize is that you might have not been at these free calls. You might have not been there and your son is going to portray a different image to you and his daughters. You know what I'm saying? And he's going to he's gonna portray a different image to you and his daughters and his, to, to his supporters. He wants to... Listen, narcissists are very charming. They're very charming individuals. They come off very congenial, very nice, you know, um, but behind the scenes, they're devils. And I know it's hard for you to believe that your son done gave it up like that. 
And I know that you're probably worried about Gucci, Prada, and Chanel being, you know, at risk and you not being able to live the lavish life and them stripping your son away from everything. I totally get it. And then the flip side is, is of course, there could be some, um, you know, maybe some people are lying. I understand that, right? But what you have to realize is that Sean Carter, Sean Combs is in a, he's, he's in a conundrum right now. And unfortunately, you coming out and trying to use different things from, you know, uh, different, trying to say that people are pulling a money grab. Yeah, I said that about Cassie. Yeah, I said it about Cassie. You know what I'm saying? Listen, um, I'm going to wrap this up because we've been up here for a minute. I want to know what y'all think in the comments. Let me know what you think about the from the top with the Foxy Brown and uh, Tisa Tell story. Let me know what you think about Cardi B partying with Offset, acting delusional. Also, let me know what you think about um, Nicki Minaj addressing the Kelsey situation with the Lochi sneakers. I thought that that was interesting. And Safari being in Gag City. Oh, also the Asian doll in Tusi. I want to know what you think about that. Did you notice that Tusi tried to sound Tusi tried to sound mad masculine when he was addressing Asian doll in the space, but he didn't have that energy when he was talking about girls getting known from their man. It was just weird to me. I don't know. I know somebody's gonna be up there supporting him, but whatever. I just didn't like it. I did feel like it was very sassy for him to get mad that girls are getting known through their man. And Asian doll was right. She said many guys be trying to put their girlfriend on and turn them up or whatever, probably so they don't gotta beg them for money. So yeah. And then finally, let me know what you think about Janice Combs and all of that too i really love this hoodie right it's like some sort of like camouflage type hoodie listen i wanted to get this from um i was gonna get this from abercrombie and fitch it's 80 dollars. do you know that i got this on a steal from old navy for in 1999 so you know what i'm learning now as i get older is to look for a dupe for everything now you know dupes the quality may be different but i mean this i paid 20 dollars for this and i'm gonna wear it a few times i might get it dry clean but yo check this um it's like this hoodie out it's like it's a um it's like a camo and i really love it because i got some new balances that match that color too and i got the dark brown one too and I got some new balance to match that too. Or I'm gonna get me a pair of Tims. Need a pair of Tims. So anyway, potent pondering, never pandering. Make sure that you subscribe to this channel. Also, make sure that you support the channel. The Cash App is in the description. I hope y'all all have an amazing Monday. I'm about to go in the crib and uh, upload this video. Hopefully I get it out in the 12 o'clock hour and all of that too. So listen, I'm up out of here. Y'all be blessed. Peace.